The next guest, I have to say, is Chalk to Ulrika's Cheese. Please welcome the unique Mr. George Melly. George Melly! <laughs> Oh. Dear, you look fantastic, Mr. Melly. Thanks. Now, I thought of you, I thought of you earlier when we were playing that truth game, people standing up and sitting down. Because uh, you'd have just been standing the whole time, wouldn't you, George? <laughs> More or less. Because uh, we know you for all sorts of things. You're, you know, uh, accomplished jazz musician, jazz singer, journalist, expert on surrealist art, all these things. But everything, everything in your life, it seems to come back to shagging, George. It really does. Yeah. Uh, but no, the stories, the stories do tend to come back. And you're incredibly frank about it all. First off, when did you have your sexual awakening, George? Well, it was when I was about five, I suppose. I had a dream. <laughs> <laughs> Already they're off. I'm like, to Freud, by the way. <laughs> I was very sexually active at that age, mentally, you know. Of course, I didn't know what it was. But I had this dream. I had an Uncle Percy who had a farm, and I used to go there sometimes, <laughs> and Uncle Percy kept pigs. And I had this dream in which I was lying down, and presumably as some form of pig, in uh, the pig shit, and rolling about. And uh, I remember waking up and thinking, that was jolly nice. And what it probably was was a sort of orgasm without knowing what it was. <laughs> a rather disgusting. <laughs> To say, yeah, yeah. And, and and you remembered it. That's a, a lot of people would have blanked that from their mind. <laughs> no, I didn't. No, you didn't. I was, uh, I was very fond of my uncle Percy's pigs from then on. <laughs> <laughs> Make He's the a link. Shocker. Yes. Oh God. Does that sound sexy to you, Ulrika? <laughs> Best say no. You see, don't he's, I, he's straight. destroyed it. I love pigs. There you are. <laughs> <laughs> And then, then uh, from, from school, off to the Navy, and you went hog wild then, didn't you? <laughs> well, I went hog wild in between, actually. Oh, really? I, I went to a public school called Stowe, uh, <laughs> which uh, uh, many people passed through Stowe, undoubtedly without any sexual experience at all, but not so me. <laughs> you see, <laughs> the thing was that my mother... Uh, my mother was very keen on gays. Or oh, right. Queers, or so we call them. Yes. And are again, I believe. In the most, <laughs> but she loved them, and they all looked wonderful, <laughs> and they dressed marvelously, and they smelt nice. So unlike my father's friends, <laughs> and, and so I thought, well, uh, this is the path I must tread. In fact, you know the old uh, piece of graffiti that was once written in a lavatory in New York. Uh, somebody wrote, "My mother made me a homosexual." Somebody wrote underneath, "If I bought the wool, would she make me one?" <laughs> But now, so there you were. You were you were gay for how many years were you gay for? Uh, yesterday afternoon. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was uh, completely gay until I was about seventeen or eighteen, and then I suppose I was bisexual for another what, eight years, and then I became a sort of uh, uh, heterosexual. But I never made any moral choice. You understand? It was a question of uh, what I liked. Now, you're a big drinker. Big drinker, I know. Are you? Oh, yeah, no, Pete. What not do you that. like to drink? No, not that. You know what WC Field said about water? Never drink it, fish fucking it. 